poor test levels are um, a good way to have a poor quality of life. Hi everyone, welcome to the TRT and Hormone Optimization YouTube channel. I am Danny Bossa and I am joined with my very honored esteemed guest that today, uh, uh, John Meadows, who is an IFBB pro. You may have heard of him from his uh, YouTube channel, Mountain Dog, uh, Mountain Dog One, uh, the website Mountain Dog Diet. His YouTube channel has got about a quarter million subscribers and uh, we're really excited to have him on. How are you doing, uh, John? I'm great, thank you. I, I appreciate you having me on. Good to be with you. Awesome. Welcome to this channel. I am Dr. Steven de Vos, the lifting dermatologist, and this is my bro science hunting partner, Danny Bossa. If you want to learn more about the most cutting edge science based information in the world of hormone optimization, please like and subscribe. Click the bell button to get notified. I also invite you to join my other YouTube channel, The Lifting Dermatologist. The link you can find in the description of this video. Going to do a kind of a small disclaimer, kind of like I did the last time uh, with the channel and the group. There is a little slight separation in the group. We uh, restrict ourselves to very certain topics. We've expanded on those topics ever so slightly. On the YouTube channel, we'll be a little bit more flexible in what types of topics, we want, things we want to discuss. Um, obviously, with John Meadows here, we're probably not going to be sticking to this, you know, strict TRT. Uh, so I just want to make a disclaimer that any of the doctors in our group are not associated with, you know, the, directly associated with the channel or with John. You know, if we talk about a certain subject that goes off the rails, it has got nothing to do with the doctors. We you know, very much appreciate the doctors in the group for everything they do to help us with the TRT related stuff. Um, so, yeah, so basically I wanted to have John on uh, just because he's very, very respected in the bodybuilding community. He's got a, w a website that talks about anabolics, about diet, about training, about nutrition, about everything under the sun. Uh, I mean, you, you think it, you name it. And we happen to get a ton of requests from guys that are saying, you know, I'm on, I'm on my TRT. I've been training for a while. I want to start adding more. I want to start taking it to the next level. I'm not quite sure how I read the bro science. I, you know, I don't want to just take whatever I would love to hear an expert talk about his experiences with this type of thing. And I reached out to, uh, to John Meadows. Um, so John, if you take the typical guy who's like, you know, he's been super healthy. He's, um, his nutrition's great. He's been training for a while and stuff. And he's just, you know, like you and I, the type of those experimenter type of guys that just want mm -hmm. to start doing something else, but they want to do it in the right way. They want to do it safely. They want to do it keeping their health more or less, you know, uh, preserve the health more or less. Um, what type of advice in that regard would you give guys? Well, <clears throat> man, that's a that's going to require a long answer. I might put you to sleep. So yeah, get comfortable. Yeah, <laughs> Well, so, I mean, I started competing in the 80s, and, you know, I was a pretty um, uh, anti-gear guy. You know, I was a teenager, <clears throat> and back then, I think that was, uh, you know, there was a book called Death in a Locker Room. I don't know if you remember that, uh, Bob Goldman book. I think, I think it's I think it's who wrote that. Um, but I was one of those guys that said, man, this stuff will kill you. You know, you take a pill, you're going to die tomorrow. And um, I got to the point when I was in my early 20s where I really wanted to be a pro bodybuilder. I mean, I really wanted to be a pro bodybuilder from the age of 13 on. I actually competed at 13 years old. But I think a realization hit me when I was in my early 20s that I'm going to have to do something extra to get to where these other guys are. And I had done really well naturally. I was a 500-pound squatter in high school, and I worked really hard. I, I built a really good frame for myself. I'm going somewhere with all this, by the way. Um, so, you know, I started doing what research I could find. Of course, it's very limited back then, right? We only had, you know, we had like the anabolic reference guide. I don't know if you remember that. We had mm -hmm. uh, Dan Duchesne's stuff. So I was trying to learn as best I could from those things. I'm pretty sure that was well before Bill Llewellyn came out with his stuff. But um, Bill's a great guy, by the way. But um, so I... Um, I'm quite the experimenter. Um, I was also a poor college kid. So, you know, I'm kind of reading what all these guys are doing uh, back then. And of course, I didn't really have uh, much money. And my training partner just so happened that his dad was a veterinarian, right? So 
he comes in one day and he says, Hey, John, I saw some wind straw on my dad's vet truck. What do you think? I said, you know what? I'm ready to pull the trigger, man. Let's do it. So <clears throat> I got this 30 CC bottle of up John wind straw from, from my friend for $50. And later I realized those things were worth like $350, but <laughs> Um, I took it. It was it was 50 milligram dose. I took I took uh, one cc every other day, so it was a 60 day cycle pre contest, and I didn't take anything else. That was all I had the money to take, and I won all the men's open overall shows I did that year doing that. I did two shows back to back, and I won the light heavyweight class in the overall, and um, and then my thought was, well, that stuff I used. Tom, I, I, I remembered being at a Tom Platt seminar where he said, you know, this stuff is the polish on the Corvette, but it's not how you, how you build the Corvette. So I always stored that in my brain. And then in the off seasons, I would always train natural. Like, you know, let's just get back to natural training. Let's build everything we can naturally. So the first several years I competed, it was just um, a small amount of something to kind of polish everything up. And it wasn't until I was probably in my mid-20s that I'd ever even try and test um, because back then it was just, you know, let me just do a little bit of Winstrow or let me just do a little bit of a, some Prima Ball and tablets. It was very, very basic. And fast forward into nowadays. And, you know, I talk to people about this stuff cause I'm very, I'm very open about this stuff. And they're like, that's impossible. You can't win men's shows on 30 milliliters of Winstrow. You have to take a thousand megs of test. You have to take 800 megs of DECA. You got to take a thousand megs of trend. And it's, it's unfortunate because in, in so much as gear, a little bit goes a long way. And, you know, I've worked with many, many pros and um, they take varying amounts. Some take a lot, some don't take much, you know, it, it varies. It depends on the person. So it's, um, so what I try to tell people, first of all, is uh, to answer your question is you're going to, you're going to hear a lot of different opinions from people that are in kind of today's generation that tell you you need to take these whopping doses of, of different things. So the first thing I would tell somebody is, no, you don't. You know, you might take, the first time I ever took test, it was the old Mexican sauce, sauce that came in the old 18 gauge pen, very, very painful, right? Um, <clears throat> I took one of those every 10 days. I only had the money to get um, six of them. So that was my 60 day cycle. I took one every 10 days and I, I blew up. I probably gained 10 pounds of muscle. Um, it was amazing. It was, a, I mean, I had the beginner gains right with it. 250 milligrams every 10 days. Pretty amazing. Right. Um, but I tell people, you know, start, if you're going to, if you're going to go down that route, the first thing you got to do is just be conservative. There's no reason to take 800 megs. If you can do really well with 300 megs, there's no reason to take 1500 megs. If you can do real well with 300 megs. So, the place to start with number one is the first thing you have to do is you have to realize all these people talking all this nonsense about mega doses. You don't need that. Um, now we all react a little differently. I might, I might do a lot better off of 200 milligrams than somebody else does, but you don't know until you try. So at least be smart and start at the lower doses and see how you do. The next thing I would tell somebody is, okay, you're going to do that. What's your long-term plan? Are you talking about six weeks or 12 weeks? You've got to have a plan because there's different situations. There's some people who are going to want to do this forever and just roll the dice and risk everything they have. And there's some people that's going to want to have periods where they're lowering their dose or they're coming off and implementing a PCT um, plan or things like that. So what is your overall plan? What are you trying to do? I mean, that's fine if you want to take a little something, but how long are you going to take it? How are you going to come off of it? What are you going to do once you come off of it? How are you going to, restore your natural levels if possible. Do you want to have kids someday? I mean, there's a lot of things that people have to think about before they just say, oh, I'm going to pull the trigger. I'm just going to start taking it. Have a plan in place. Um, maybe things will go according to your plan. Maybe they won't, but at least take the time to get to, to at least talk to somebody who can help you out with a plan and try to understand what you're trying to do. Because, you know, I told you the way I started was um, off seasons were completely natural. All the off seasons were. And then, you know, I, then, I be, then the big thing became, well, you know, as much as, as much time as you spend on is what you should spend off. So it became a 12 weeks on 12 weeks off. Then I remember hearing one coach say, no, everybody just does six weeks after a show they're off and then they're right back on the rest of the year. 
And then it got to the point where nobody's ever really off. They just blast and they cruise. And now it's to the point where, okay, now they blast and they cruise, but the cruise is really a blast for most right. people. <laughs> so the amount of things that people take has just increased exponentially. Um, and you know, when you're new to all this stuff, you don't know, you haven't seen what I've seen over the last 30 years. So you can't really tell, well, I think people are probably going a little bit overboard. Um, so those are just kind of my initial thoughts. And when you look at, I mean, the physiques from the, you know, the Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, era compared to now, I mean, obviously they were on some kind of gear back then. Oh, hundred percent. You know, yeah. you, know compare, you know, comparing the bodies to now they're taking, you know, 10, 20 times, 30 times the amount of, uh, the amount of drugs back then a little went a long way. And you had, in my opinion, the nicer physiques, if anything. Yeah. Um, I mean, I remember seeing, um, I spent some time with several of the, I, I have a tremendous amount of respect for the guys from the eighties and nineties. And I've spent quite a bit of time with a lot of them. And, you know, they'll tell me, you know, yeah, we did our 200, 250, 300 megs of DECA once a week. We took our Winstrel tabs in the off season. We replaced the Winstrel tabs with people tabs, 30 milligrams. And then you had, you know, you had the Michelac crew where the guys were just taking like mega dosing, but those, that was the smaller amount. It wasn't like everybody. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, they, <clears throat> the, um, <laughs> the old Crest Corman and Grom, I don't know if you remember those, those were the old cadaver, uh, GHs, those came around and, you know, you had guys that started taking that. I'm sure you've seen Chris Dickerson and his pointy elbow. Um, and, uh, you know, and then the stakes just continued to rise. People started using a lot more of the GH. They learned how to use insulin, started taking a lot of insulin and then the size got bigger, but the detail started to disappear in bodies. And one of the things I always liked about the guys from the eighties and nineties was they had a lot of detail. Mm -hmm. um, they had strided triceps, they had strided quadriceps. And I always was impressed by that detail. I always thought it looked fantastic. And very rarely now do you see these guys at a high level. I know I compete against them that have that kind of detail. They're just kind of big and cartoony looking. And sometimes their face even looks bloated. And I'm like, I don't understand how, you're, you have a bloated face when you're, you know, 4% body fat, like there's something going on there, but, um, the physiques have changed. There's still some fantastic physiques out there. Guys, I really think look great, but overall, you know, there's not too many people that have the kind of detail, um, that I like to see personally. Gotcha. Yeah. Cause I, you know, I grew up in the, um, you know, reading all those magazines when I was younger and I just see these guys with these, uh, incredible physiques they weren't i mean they were big guys but they weren't you know these these completely jacked up crazy looking cartoonish guys like you're talking about and you know later on in life when i started getting onto this stuff and i, I talk about this stuff all the time we look, we look at these guys back then like what were those guys doing like all clearly they weren't doing natural they were training their asses off they were eating really well but what were they taking that left them looking as healthy as they did compared to the guys of today that look very unhealthy, if anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, I remember taking trips to England uh, in the 90s. And I, <laughs> I remember going to a gym and I remember one of my friends pulled up in his car and he opened the trunk and it was nothing but ampules and tabs. Oof. The entire trunk of his car. So I'm looking at it and I'm like, oh, wow, that's parable. And like, that's from Negma. Those are the 1.5 milliliter amps of Parabol. And oh, wow, here's the Prima Bowl and the Shearing Prima Bowl. And then here's the Mastron from Belgium with the skull and crossbones on it. I mean, they had very clean, <laughs> they had, it sounded scary, but they had very clean stuff back then too. And, you know, so you talk to these guys and you say, okay, for the Parabol, you know, it was Parabol, right? Trend, um, a different ether, but it was Parabol. You know, how much do you guys take of this? And they'd be like, well, yeah, you take two amps a week. I'm like, really? How much is, how much is in an amp? It's, I had a weird dose of 76 milligrams of an amp. Okay. 150 milligrams a week. And he's like, well, the guys that go really crazy, take three amps a week, you know? So now you're looking at, you know, whatever 228 milligrams or whatever that adds up to a week. And if you talk to people nowadays and you ask them, you know, what's a typical trend dose, they'll tell you anywhere between 600 megs and a thousand which boggles my mind how we got to this point. Why um, do you think that is, John? Why do you think oh, it is that it worked so I, well I, back then and now suddenly those same doses, are, they just don't work, apparently? Yeah, that's, well, I think there's a, I think there's, that's a great question. And I think there's a couple things in play. I question the quality of what's being made today. That could be part of it. 
I also see a generation that want this to happen overnight. So, you know, I competed in, I don't know, it's either 14 or 16 pro qualifiers before I won my pro card. And it was a long journey. And a lot of people had a similar journey that I did. Maybe not as long as mine, but it took them some time. And when you have these kids come to you now, you know, they'll say, hey, I, I want to be a pro. And you're like, okay, well, have you ever competed? Well, no, but I want to be a pro. I'm like, okay, what's your, what are you thinking in terms of timeline? Well, I was thinking next year. Well, really? Okay. And that's the standard. That's what I hear. Um, people want it to happen overnight. So the way, so then now, so now you have an expectation of it's going to happen overnight for me. So that, that's part of the issue. And then the other issue is you have a lot of young coaches that have come into the sport recently. There's no barrier to entry. Anybody can say they're a coach and, you know, say they have the miracle drug protocol or whatever, and people will go, okay, I want to try it. So now you have these coaches coming into the industry that don't really know how to teach training or nutrition, really. They're just providing very, very big doses to the point where, you know, here, here's the reality. If you take enough stuff and you eat enough calories, any kind of training will work to a degree. So they're like, well, you know, um, you know, just take a thousand megs of this and a thousand megs of that. And then, of course, the person training, maybe they don't feel so well physically, but the training seems to work because, yeah, you're in a constantly ramped up state of protein synthesis. You've got all this stuff going on, but there's no real you know, thoughts on how do you really train? How do you, you know, how do you really do this stuff nutritionally? It's not the polish in a Corvette, right? Which is what I referred to earlier and what I think it should be. So you don't have guys out there saying, Hey, let's start with a small dose. Let's see how you do. You have just the opposite. You know, I get these emails. I got an email two weeks ago from a guy said, Hey, what do you think this, how do you think this looks? And it was four or five grams a week of different chemicals. And I said, what are you, what are you competing in? And he's like, well, I'm in the master's class at my it uh at my in my city and I said so you're doing like a local show in the master's class he said yeah and I said you know that's like three times more than I've ever taken in my life just so you know he was like really I'm like yeah well I got it from this coach so anyways <laughs> so I think you've got some poor coaching I think you've got possibly maybe the chemicals aren't as clean as they used to be that's debatable I mean it depends on the source right you know, are you, are you working with a compounding pharmacy or are you working with somebody who's in their bathtub making stuff? Um, and then you got this unrealistic expectation that it's got to happen real fast. So, well, then I'm going to do everything I can to make it happen as fast as I can rather than take, take time to really learn my body and get to know what really truly works for me. Yeah. But I'm just wondering if, I mean, this is just an opinion, but I always wondered if the guys out there back then just had I don't want to say they had more pride, but they just enjoyed the process maybe more, you know, they, they, the, you know, the way they, they, they dialed in their nutrition and their training and just constantly looking in the mirror, I'm going to do a little bit more of this, a little bit more of this. And, and the, whatever anabolics they were taking was just a little something to push them in the right direction. Whereas perhaps now the anabolics are more of the crutch than anything else. It's to, to it's to overcompensate for the, maybe, perhaps the lack of everything else or the, or the, or the, the, the time constraints of like, you're saying, I want to, I want to be a pro by next year versus guys back then, they probably were training for a dozen years before they even considered such a thing. You know, what I find interesting is when I talk to some of the older guys, I find that they have really cool personalities. Um, you know, whether you're talking to, you know, Tony Pearson or Platts, these guys have, they have really, interesting and cool personalities you know you really enjoy talking to them they i think they love to train i think that was when they were training like the way i picture it they really truly enjoyed training they really liked the process they really liked going going into the gym and saying you know how can i get better today and i think you get a lot of people now it's like well i'm doing this because um and i'm not saying these are bad reasons i'm just saying it's a little different you know what somebody picked on me or i'm angry or i'm going to show them or somebody told me i couldn't do it so i'm going to do it or or it's or then this i do think is kind of bad or they say uh or they think well this is my route to become famous so i'm just going to do this and become famous and then everybody will love me and those are the people you you see that they get their pro card and then they're gone in a year or two. They're at the expos. They won't shake people's hands. They, you know, they're hard to get along with. Um, whereas, you know, the late, you know, so it's a, 
it's a different kind of, <clears throat> there's a lot of really good guys I know in the sport now, but there's also a lot of people that they get a little bit full of themselves, just to be honest with you, a little full of themselves. They, um, like, like me, I travel a lot, take a lot of pictures with people and things like that. And I can't imagine somebody walking up to me and me giving them an attitude like this person is coming up to you because they respect you and they like you. And they're just asking for a picture. And for me to give them an attitude, like it doesn't make sense to me. Like if someone comes up and attacks me or my character, then yeah, I'm probably going to get an attitude with you. But if someone's coming up to me because they like me, I would think that my natural response would be, oh, this is pretty cool, man. This, this guy follows me. He, he likes what I'm doing. Yeah, I'm going to take a picture with you. But, you know, it's just a little different, um, a little different nowadays. Um, I'm, I'm fortunate that I know people from multiple generations and I, I get, get to see all this stuff. So I know who a lot of the good guys are out there and it's, um, it's one of the reasons why I like traveling is because I get to see people and the different events like the Olympia and the Arnold that, you know, I've known over the years. So I don't want to paint this picture that everybody's bad people. That's certainly not accurate. I just think people do things now for different reasons than what they used to. I think those guys like in pumping iron, they're all very passionate about training. They all really enjoyed training. And, um, you know, some of that it's probably exists. A, a huge difference it's just of tr doing it because you love it and doing it because you're passionate versus I have a reason why I need to get huge. Yeah. I mean, if you shut down Instagram, you know, there's a joke that goes around that says, if you shut down Instagram, then half of these people would never go to the gym again, you know? And I think there's probably a lot of truth to that, honestly. Um, you know, what, you know, what would have been really interesting is if back in the days they had access to Instagram, what do you think Arnold would have been doing? I mean, he probably would have been terrorizing people mentally. He probably would have been, it would have been really funny, I think. Um, so yeah, that's just, I think that I'm would have th been I'm thinking about that now, the type of, the type of posts he'd be making on Instagram with the characters he had and the. Yeah, I know with the personality and a lot of those guys had really, you know, Tom Platts had his personality and. You know, then you had kind of, you had the Danny Padillas. I thought Danny was a phenomenal bodybuilder. I don't think he ever got his just due. Um, there are just a lot of guys. I remember in eight, 1985 seeing Frank Richards and Bob Paris and Sergio and all those guys. And, of course, that's when Mike Christian and Barry DeMay were coming up and Gaspari had just turned pro and was at the Olympia. It was, uh, that's kind of, that's what I remember really getting me into bodybuilding was right around those years. That's when I saw it and said, man, this is phenomenal. I really like this. I wonder if the guys of today have that same enjoyment that they had back then or that you're having, or is it more of, I got to go to the gym. It's my job. I, ha I have to do this for this reason. And I, I just got to get it done. And I wonder if some of the enjoyment is gone for a lot of these guys, because it's just a different, it's yeah. a different mentality now. Who knows? You know, who knows? A lot of people seem to be awful angry in their Instagram posts these days. So <laughs> who knows? <laughs> so what would you suggest for, and again, it's just because I get this, I mean, I get 10 or 20 of these a week. It's, it's, it's insane. Like I was saying at the beginning, the guys are, you know, it's like I'm doing my 250, 200 milligram a week or 250 milligram a week of tests. I'm training for a while. I've been hearing about nandrolone. I've been hearing about peptides. I, mean, I want to add something to it. What would you say, in your opinion, would be the, the safest way to embark on experimenting with those kind of compounds without screwing yourself up too much? That could well, potentially be know, good long term. I always liked the thought process of where you did one thing at a time so that you could get an idea of what worked really well for you. Like I can tell you that uh, I can tell you, for example, the Winstraw. Um, tablets worked a million times better for me than Anabar tablets did. And I would never have known that if I was taking them all at the same time. Um, I can tell you that Masteron is something I really, really like. I mean, that's one of my favorite things. Um, so I, I think what can be really interesting is when people try compounds out on their own. Um, and then once you figure out a couple that you like, that's when you can kind of get creative with it. You know, I always liked having um, an oil and a tablet. So, you know, you could do maybe a test and then a tablet of, 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 a, of you know, whatever, 50, 20 to fit anywhere from 20 to 50 milligrams of like, say, a Winstraw tablet. Um, you know, then maybe you bump your test up to 400, 400 milligrams or something like that. You should do really well off that. Um, but I like to have kind of an idea of what really works. And then you can kind of start playing around with combinations. 
and you start to learn, man, this combination works really well for me. Like I can tell you that, you know, when I was uh, eight weeks out from a contest, I always would add Winstrow in with my test and I always, it always worked great. It worked fantastic. And then uh, the last four weeks I would throw my master on and it worked great, worked fantastic. But um, so I would tell people don't jump on five or six different things. Don't mega dose, just, just try some different compounds out. And, you know, then you got to look at, you know, the half-life and how long those things stick around, things like that, because you got to give them time to work. You know, if you're going to take, for example, if you're going to try a deck or EQ, you don't want to just give it seven days and go, well, Hey, it didn't work for me. It's been seven days. <laughs> um, but if you want to try in a draw and you don't, if you don't feel anything after seven days, then there's probably an issue, right? There's probably yeah. a problem. So I think you got to take a look at the chemical. You got to set a realistic expectation. I think, I think in the faster acting stuff, you should know in a week. Um, and then you, if you get the slower acting stuff, give it a couple weeks, see how you're doing, see how you're feeling, and then let it go for four or five, six weeks. And then you can evaluate, you know, does that something that worked really well for me? Did it not work well for me? Um, because it's interesting. Uh, <clears throat> it is interesting. I've worked with people that, um, for example, Anadrol, for example, that made them feel terrible. Um, and then I've had people that use a little bit of Anadrol. I used to have this unique way I did it where I would do it 10 days on, 20 days off. So we would take it for 10 days and we'd back off for 20 days. And we would do that. And you could text, you could check someone's blood work and you could look at their AST and their ALT and it would virtually not even move. Um, but they still had the 10 days where they were really big and full and strong. And then they, it's, you know, the old two steps forward, one step back, they would gain 10 pounds and then they would be off for the 20 days and maybe they would lose seven pounds of it. And then they'd get back on do the 10 days, but they were three positive net positive three pounds of what they were right. last time. So this becomes a long range game. And it was really nice because I, I didn't see any liver function changes. Uh, you know, a lot of the problems people had with Anadrol was water retention. Their lower back would lock up. They'd have issues training, things like that. But this, this that was just one way that I, that, you know, I used to like to do things. That's one example of how you can be kind of creative, but kind of be safe at the same time. You know, and mm-hmm. I think people get a little crazy with their anti-estrogens now, too. I hope I, don't, I hope I don't go off on too many tangents here, but I see people shutting off their estrogen completely, which I think is a really bad idea. Um, you know, somebody will take some tests and go, okay, well, I got to take a bunch of Arimidex every day. Well, no, you don't ease up, you know, but you don't know those things unless you're getting your labs done. You know, you're looking at your estradiol or looking at your, you know, your liver function. Um, most of the guys I know that have health problems, they're all kidney related. It's either, it's either, um, the blood urea nitrogen or it's their ejection fraction, um, they just don't pay attention. They don't, they don't monitor their blood pressure and they just, they just take too much, honestly. I mean, we've seen people die a lot in the last two years. I know some pros, I know one in particular that dropped off the scene because he had to get a kidney replaced. And these were the guys who gained a lot of weight really fast. Um, so you can imagine whenever I see somebody now that is gaining like a mega amount of weight really fast, mm-hmm. it's like, all right, well, let's see where you're at in two years. Let's see if you're still around, you know, so. Let's say something like uh, estrogen that you just brought up. Would you, would you base it solely on labs or would you base it on how they're feeling or symptoms? I think you, or... I think you, I think it's a combination of the two. I think you've always got to take into account how people feel. Um, um, I have a really good friend, Dr. Serrano, that actually lives around the corner from me. And he's really big on that as well. He's like, well, a number may tell you something, but if you feel awesome, then maybe things aren't bad just because a piece of paper says it's bad. So I think it's a, I think it's a little bit of both. I think you also have to look at, you know, if you see someone's estradiol, let's say it's elevated a little bit, but the testosterone's elevated a little bit. So should you be concerned? Maybe not. I mean, you wouldn't expect someone with sky high test to have low estrogen. You, you, you know, those two things work together. So um, there's got to be a balance there, right? So I think it's a combination of both. I think you just need to know what's going on in your labs, but, you know, go and go by how you feel uh, as well. I think it's a combination of the two. So it's interesting you say that because I'm, I'm a really close friend of, uh, or Eric is a close friend of mine, or (laughs) you want to say it. We've had him on many times and uh, he's actually the one that kind of helped to get you in on this, but there's a lot of talk with on the TRT forums where, you know, kind of realizing best practices is you don't block estrogen on TRT 
you know, perhaps you do in the bodybuilding world when you're taking all these compounds, perhaps you need to. And then I was wondering mm. if you really need to, if, you're, if your testosterone no. levels are just going way, 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 way up and then estrogen is, is following suit and keeping a balance, does that automatically mean you need to, to block it for any reason? Or are there bodybuilders these days that are taking a ton of stuff and they're like, I don't need to take an AI? Well, I, th I mean, there's a cosmetic part of it. Like if you have really high estrogen, maybe you have some water retention, maybe you have some, your definition is, is obscured. So there's that part of it. You know, maybe you want to manage it with some things like Proviron and Novadex. I think I'm one of the last people on the planet that still believes in Novadex. Um, and then there's the health part of it. You know, you, you shut off someone's estrogen with Letro or Remedex or Remicin at high doses, and you almost always see their HDL just it tanks. Mm -hmm. um, it's probably not a good idea to have no HDL. I mean, it's just probably not a good idea, right? So, I mean, Eric and I have talked about this a bunch. Like, I've taken Novadex on and off for 20 years. Um, and any time I, it's been probably 10 years since I did a Remedex, but when I put that stuff in, I felt terrible. My joints hurt. I didn't have any desire to be around any women. It was, it was, just, um, it was bad news for me. And then you talk to all these people and they're like, yeah, my muscles are flat. My joints hurt bad. I felt terrible. Um, and then there's Eric could talk to you about all the studies on, um, even fat loss when you completely shut off your estrogen. There's a lot of different bad things that happen when you shut it off. And, and again, you know, like I said, you got these kind of these young coaches coming into bodybuilding and, you know, they're putting people on two milligrams of, of a Remedex every single day. They're having them take Letro and, all this stuff. I'm like, Oh my God. I mean, how does these, how's this person even functioning in life? Right. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's an interesting, it's an interesting topic for sure. Yeah. I took, uh, I crashed my E2 with, uh, I think it was three quarters of a milligram a week, a quarter milligram, three times a week. And after two weeks I was crashed and I was done for like two weeks. I just, I didn't want to yeah. get out of bed. You see yeah. these guys taking a milligram every second day. And I was like, uh, oh, when no, you say no. taking a uh, higher than that, a lot higher than that's what I see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not, not a good idea. idea. When you said try one thing at a time, are you implying trying one thing at a time with testosterone as the base or literally trying one thing? I'm just going to try it with straw and I'm not going to take anything else. You know, so you could make some arguments both ways on this. Like I could see somebody saying you have to have that test base. Like if you just use Mastron, you're going to have some issues. Um, I personally, when I started, it's funny, I got flies on me too. Um, me too. <laughs> every time I start this podcast, this one fly just comes out of the woodwork and he's like, yeah, I'm just going to piss him off for the next hour. We had um, our our, uh, our kids' football season, regular season, ended this weekend. We had the whole football team over, and we had the doors open in the house, so now the house is full of flies. But um, it, and I know it sounds a little weird to people to try one thing at a time specifically, um, and, and you can make an argue. I'm sure people listen to this and go, that's a bad idea, and I get that. I've read I, – I know where you're going with that, but I still think it's fun to experiment and see how you do on different things, you know, um, Try this, try Winstraw for six weeks and then try now. Is it a viable, the, the question then becomes, is it a viable long-term strategy for like what you're talking about, TRT? And yeah, maybe not, you know, maybe that's not. I, mean, I tend to think from the bodybuilding angle. Um, but in terms of longevity, uh, just TRT, just general health, I'm more of a just take some tests kind of guy. I'm, I'm kind of the basic old school Let's see what test does put you where you need to be, where you feel great. And let's leave you there. I mean, for two and a half years now, uh, it's been two and a half years since I did what you, when I, since I competed. So I've been doing straight TRT ever since. And it's been anywhere from 200 to 300 milligrams a week, which sounds pretty high for TRT, but not when you've done what I've done for <laughs> so many years. Um, um, and I feel great. I feel fantastic. I've lost no muscle. Um, you know, I've got a lot of people that I work with that they're, they're amazed. They're like, wow, I can't believe I can maintain this amount of muscle with this little bit. I'm like, you know, if you build it um, the right way, in my opinion, and you continue to train hard, training itself is a, is a, is a very, is a very, I mean, it's an incredible stimulus. Um, you can hold on to a lot more muscle than you think. 
You know, the people that just their physiques just completely deteriorate, they've either stopped training or they've stopped all their chems together and their levels are all just terrible. Um, but if you get guys that really truly do get on HRT and they continue to train hard, they usually keep most of their muscle. It may not have the volume or fullness that it has, like say when they compete, like, like I don't have quite that volume now, but the muscle's still there. It, it, it's still there. Um, I always tell people it's a lot harder to build muscle than to maintain it. And um, anyways, that's just kind of a side note. It's a little different topic, but um, you know, I think probably the people in your group that are interested in health and longevity, I'm more of a, a straight uh, test guy. And, you know, I've used sippy and for two and a half years straight. Um, you know, I would rather have somebody, uh, you know, once they've wrapped up uh, a cycle, I'd rather have them try PCT, honestly, to see if they can get things going normally again. But, you know, I'm sure you've heard that once you do enough cycles, it doesn't <laughs> It, you're done. It doesn't come yeah. back. Yeah. Um, you know, there's no amount of HCG and Cloma that's going to bring you back. And I, I've been at that point. My, for me, that was 2003 because I always try to, okay, let's bring everything back naturally. And then there was one year where I was like, okay, well, that doesn't work anymore. And I think most guys fall into that after enough tests, enough cycles. Eventually they get to where the HCG and Cloma just isn't going to do it, isn't going to get you back. Right. I do have a question that I promised a friend of mine I was going to ask you is when I said you were having, having on, he says, you have to ask him this one question. So his, he's, he's on TRT, but he's part of this group. Uh, like a guy who runs it, I believe his name Tayan or something like that. Oh, is this a DECA question? <laughs> yeah. So, so apparently there's this big school of thought in these, uh, in these forums where guys are just, taking 600 milligrams of DECA for a period of six weeks. That's all they take. They take nothing else but DECA for six weeks. And then they get back to whatever the hell they were doing before. Either mm -hmm. guys that were on TRT or guys that weren't even on TRT. And guys are reporting, yeah, I've done it several times now and it was fine. And I just, he's thinking about doing this thing. I've been trying to tell him that he shouldn't and he, just, he really wants to do it. He says, but ask John, ask John, ask John. Have you, ever, have you heard of that at all? Or? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I've heard of it. That, that, that group has been around a while. And um, a long time, actually. Um, he's a very opinionated guy. Um, I've had people try it. I've had, done, I've had some do pretty well. Um, remember, man, I'm an experimenter at heart. If I hear something's uh, a viable strategy, then I'm going to give it a shot and see how it works. I never actually did it on myself, though. I will say that. Um, but with the DECA, I've had multiple people try it that way. And I think some did pretty well. And then some had some side effects, which I personally have with DECA, um, you know, where you have some issues downstairs. Um, um, so, you know, for me, like literally one shot of DECA and I'm done. Like um, I'm, I'm a, I'm a eunuch basically. So, um, but I, I've had, I've seen kind of mixed versions. Some people did okay. Some people didn't do so well, which I would expect because, I think it's crazy for someone to say, this is how you do it. You take this amount of DECA for this long. I think it's, I think people are just more unique than that. I mean, I understand we all have similar DNA and things like that, but I just think it's a little foolish to say I have the right approach for everybody. I think the right approach is you find the right approach mm -hmm. and, and it may not be the right approach for you a year later. Like I remember, I remember taking the, I remember the Oregon on amps. I think they're from Pakistan of the DECA. And I took it um, like around 99, 2000. I loved it. It worked great. It worked fantastic. If you ask me, what do you think of DECA? I would say it's fantastic, man. I love it. 400 megs a week. I feel like an animal. Um, at some point, um, I took a little bit of it and boom, stopped working downstairs. And I was like, oh, okay, that wasn't good. So I didn't take any more. And then the next year I try it. Same thing. So eventually it was like, okay, well, this doesn't agree with my body. And the same thing with trend, you know, when I was younger, I think I was in my, I think I was probably in my late twenties when I tried trend for the first, ah, no, no, it was that stuff in England. It was probably like 27, 20 years old when I tried trend. I loved it. It was great. And then I got in my thirties, um, in my late thirties and I took some and I felt like off, like mentally something was off, was off from one, just one milliliter of it. And I was like, man, that's not right. So I didn't take any more and I'd give it three, three months, try another, try another shot of it. And like, man, I just, it's, something doesn't feel right psychologically. 
Could it have so my been point is, a different source or a different brand or a different lab or? No, uh, I mean you know probably it was obviously it was different sources, um, and maybe that played into it. And you know the thing that you get into now with this underground stuff is one thing is labeled, like I, I all these women come to me and they tell me they're taking Primabol, and I'm like, no, you're not. You're probably taking Androlone phenylpropionate or you're taking Tespropionate because that's usually what the Primabol. And these guys mislabeled, or you know you have a lady that's taking Anavar, but suddenly she starts getting bloated i'm like no you're taking d ball <laughs> um which is very i see this very common in underground stuff so you know maybe that's a part of it you know um i can't say for sure but, but what i do feel pretty confident in saying is that i do just i do think our physiology is a little different i think you have to experiment like i was a crazy responder to windstraw worked awesome for me and then i talked to other people and they're like yeah it doesn't work i take it and nothing happens now, maybe it was fake maybe it was real who knows but, but I don't believe that Winstraw, like I can't sit here and tell you, you know, you should be taking Winstraw. I don't know. Maybe you should, maybe you shouldn't. Maybe you should take a Mastron. Maybe you should be taking tests. I don't know. All I can say is it worked awesome for me, but I can't use that as a, so I think a lot of these guys, they, they have this, this worked awesome for me. So this must be the way to do it. And I, I tend to look at things a little different. I like to talk to people about things they've done. What have you tried? What have you experimented with? Well, have you ever thought about doing it this way? You ever thought about doing it that way? That's always kind of what my mindset was. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's just another topic. I, I'm not like ultra passionate about TRT. I think that, um, <clears throat> I think that poor test levels are um, a good way to have a poor quality of life. So I'm passionate about it in so much as I don't think anybody should have to go through that. And it was interesting. I was talking with a heart surgeon today and he was like, yeah, you know, my levels are about 300 right now. Is that okay? And I said, well, I mean, how do you feel? And he said, well, I feel pretty good. And I said, well, you know, normally I like to see that a little bit higher, maybe try, try a little bit um, and just see how you feel. Just see how you feel. See what happens. I'm a, I'm the, like the ultimate experiment guy. Like, I don't read something and say, this is what I believe in. I don't believe in anything uh, in particular until I've experimented a lot and I've seen a lot of other people do it. And even then, it's just, it still ultimately is only what worked for those people. So I don't really have any <clears throat> dogmatic beliefs about anything, to be honest with you. I'm really big on experimenting because I think our bodies are very unique. I think they react very differently. You know, I can take 250 megs of test and be at, you know, 1,200 um, whereas some people could take less, some people take more, you know, that's mm -hmm. just me. So I think our bodies are just very unique. So I'm always hesitant to say, you got to do exactly this. I'm like, well, maybe you do, maybe you don't. Right. Gotcha. So, uh, I understand that you're a coach as well. You're, you, you do private training, you do, uh, diet, nutrition stuff. You want to talk a little bit on that? Well, I, you know, I started my website in um, 2009, so it's been about 10 years, and I've got, I've built a ton of training programs on there. I don't even know how many I've got on there, probably 20 or 25, something like that. Um, we do, you know, the classic online coaching. I've been doing it for a long time, though. Um, so uh, I do that. Um, it, it's... Um, there's quite a wait list, <laughs> honestly. Um, it takes a while to get in this, to, to get kind of on my list. And once you're on it, you're on it. But um, I don't really advertise it, to be honest with you. Um, there's enough people coming in every day that I, I, just, I don't I, I don't think I've ever advertised it once in my life, actually. So I still like to do that because I, I still feel like uh, with coaching, it does a couple things for me. Number one, I just enjoy people seeing people succeed and being a small part of that. But then the other thing is it keeps you sharp. You know, you run into people that have different challenges and some of the coaches say, you know, you all got to eat keto, you all got to do this, or you all got to do high carb and low fat. And I, I'm not like that. It's like, well, let's look at you. Let's look at, let's try some different approaches. Um, you know, so I don't really have this philosophy that I'm married to that says everybody has to have a keto diet or everybody has to have ultra low fat and high carb. And I don't know, maybe it'll work for you. Maybe it won't. So my approach is, is very individualized um, and involves some experimenting, but, you know, we always end up finding some things that work really well for people. 
but I can't, you know, it would, it would certainly be easy, wouldn't it? If I just said I had the magic formula and I wrote a book, but there's, there's really no magic formula. Some people have fast metabolism. So people have, some people have slow metabolism. Some people are, people are at varying degrees of insulin sensitivity. People are, are people's metabolisms adjust to caloric changes at different speeds. Some people you can change their diet and their body responds really well. Some people it takes a more aggressive change. So there's a lot of, this, I always tell people like the beginning diet doesn't really mean a whole lot. It's the adjustments that you make from there based on what you're seeing. That's where the, all the chain, all the, all the magic happens for lack of a better term. It's, it's, it's observing. Here's what's happening. Here's, here's what's going on. So I'm going to make this change or not make a change, you know? So um, yeah, I mean, my website, I, I uh, mountain dog diet, you mentioned it. I have an educational channel, YouTube, that I really enjoy. It's done really well. We work really hard at it. We put five videos up every single week. We've done that for two and a half years. Hmm. It's finally caught on, and it's got a lot of traction now. It's called Mountain Dog One. I'm very proud of it because we work really, really hard at it. And, um, you know, there's um, hundreds of free workouts on there that you can try. Um, and then I have a cell phone app, actually, called Mountain Dog Diet. It's in the Google Store. Uh it's in the um, Apple store for people who have iPhones and it has, I have a, I have on my website, a membership section that I started 10 years ago as well. And it's hundreds and hundreds of different things. Um, it covers everything, everything you can think of it covers. And the cell phone app has access to all that information plus um, personal Q and a with me. So for $30 a month, people can basically ask me anything they want. I think that's a pretty good retainer fee to have somebody with my experience um, mm -hmm. available to you. And um, what else do I have going on? So I have the website, I have the cell phone app, um, member site, oh, Granite Supplements. I have a supplement company I started almost three years ago. It's called Granite Supplements, granitesupplements.com. Um, I have that. Uh, if you look at my Instagram, Mountain Dog One, you'll see me going to all places all over the country to promote my brand. And um, so that business is going really, really well as well. So I've got quite a quite a few things going on. I still do international seminars quite a bit. Go to Australia a lot. Been to England, Ireland, Scotland. Um, tons of them in Canada. I've done Australia. So um, I still like to get out and do a couple of those every year too. Awesome. For the, so for those of you watching that have seen a lot of the videos with Eric Serrano, he does a lot of videos with uh, John Meadows as well. So definitely check out his channel and you'll get to see Eric in a bit of a different light. And I think that's why the, the, the community is so big because it's like you're saying, we're all different and we all react differently to these things. And there's not really one magic formula that works to anybody. Can you yeah. imagine if it was the opposite? If you imagine was, you know, I just set up a site. How do you do, how do you do TRT? Well, you take 200 milligrams a week, you don't block your AI and take care Oh, okay. So it's that. And it just applies to everybody. I mean, there would be no community. It would just be one of those things like, you know, what do I need to go through my day? We well, need to breathe or you need to drink water. <laughs> like just, you need to take your 200 milligrams a week and that's it. There's nothing else yeah. to it. And, and that's yeah. what makes it interesting is everyone's here trying to find the right answer. And I can tell you, there is no right answer. There is there's yeah. not, you know, I, right. I, I need more tests than most. I'm somewhere between 250 and 300. If mm -hmm. I go less than 250, I feel like crap. Other guys are like mm -hmm. 250. I would take that and I'd be like, you know, out raping, <laughs> raping old yeah. ladies type thing. You know, yeah. it's it's so ind individualistic. So uh, I, I want to bring on a lot of different people, have a lot of different perspectives, a lot of different mentalities, uh, exactly guys like you. So um, I really appreciate your time, John. If there's anything you want to mention. Yeah, man, you, I'm uh, glad, to, glad to be on. I hope people get something out of it. Um, but it's a pleasure being on and thank you. Awesome. Okay. So for any of you that uh, seeing this for the first time, we're going to be putting out a ton of more videos, uh, maybe not five a week like John, because he's a savage, not like us, but we're going to try our best. So if you want to see the videos, just click on the subscribe button uh, down below and you can click on the little notification bell to uh, get notified when we uh, post new material. So uh, thank you very much. Yep. You bet. All right.